From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today, I want to talk a few minutes about uh, polymyositis and dermatomyositis. There is this uh, exciting news today that a new particle, the particle that the world has been waiting for the last 50 years, has been discovered at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland. And the particle is called Higgs boson. It has been called God's particle by late physicist Leon Lederman because it explains the structure of the subatomic particles. And it's a great discovery, not just in nuclear physics, but even for from a medical viewpoint, because you see nanotechnology in medical research and treatment has been a recent phenomenon and it's making revolutionary changes in the way we understand pathology and we also and also in devising uh, treatment modalities. The understanding of the subatomic particles also helps not just in uh, nuclear physics but also in medical research because nanotechnology is now making revolutionary changes in medical science. I mean the nanometer that's like one billionth of a meter and it's like a compare the size, the size of the whole planet Earth and a marble. If the whole planet is like a meter, then the marble is one billionth of the meter. So imagine at such microscopic level, today we can make monoclonal antibodies that can reach even the nucleus, that can target certain cancer cells, that can study a disease, study the how cancerous cells spread around the body, and also to deliver certain chemotherapeutic agents to particularly uh, sensitive cancer cells using these nanoparticles, especially monoclonal antibodies. You see the discoveries that have been made in nuclear physics impacting even medical science through understanding of uh, subatomic particles at a nano level. So that's a point I just wanted to share with you because the disease we are going to study today has also uh, um, modifying and I mean in terms of treatment because our understanding of this disease has increased because of nanotechnology. So I want to uh, give a few points today about uh, uh, polymyositis and dermatomyositis. You see in both of these diseases we have myopathic changes demonstrated by electromyography and you can take the biopsy and you see the uh, when you examine those bio, uh, biopsies, you see inflammatory myopathies. Those inflammatory myopathies, they describe like uh, different things, like a variety of combinations of patterns and uh, uh, specific diagnostic uh, criteria. So I want to tell you today about uh, the most common things. So the most common initial symptom in this disease is lower extremity weakness. Remember that point, folks. Lower extremity weakness. Because lower extremity weakness could be the initial symptom. Like, for example, patient says, like, I have difficulty getting up. That's a clinical, I mean, cardinal clinical clue for this problem. Patient says, uh, I have a difficulty to get up from my chair. So the initial symptoms are lower extremity weakness, skin rash, myalgia, arthralgia, upper extremity weakness, dysphagia. Uh, so those are the initial symptoms. So remember in the order, the lower extremity weakness, skin rash, myalgia, arthralgia, then upper extremity weakness and dysphagia. 
Now there are also neurological signs. You remember the um, polymyositis causes proximal muscle weakness. That's a very very important point because you can. I mean, you can use the mnemonic like P and P. Polymyositis proximal. So remember that point because it's very very important. There are other diseases that causes distal muscle weakness. So you should not confuse between the two, which causes distal, which causes proximal and all that. But in polymyositis, it causes proximal muscle weakness. So it causes proximal lower extremity weakness and proximal upper extremity weakness. It causes dysphagia when it involves the cricopharyngeal muscles. It also causes a facial weakness and extraocular muscle weakness. And there are also non-neurological signs like heliotrop rash, arthropathy, Leonard phenomenon, and other rashes. So the clinical symptoms are very, very important. That's where most of the time you make the diagnosis. And remember the cardinal clinical feature is proximal and symmetric muscle weakness. That is the cardinal clinical feature of inflammatory myopathies. Now, I want to describe the pathognomonic features in this disease. The weakness of the proximal muscles of the legs. Now, the point is, how do you recognize that when you see it in the question? Now, how do patients describe it? The patient says that he has difficulty to brush one's hair. That's a very, very important point. I have problem. Women usually say, I have problem. I mean, it's so hard to brush my hair. It's so hard to lift heavy items. It's so hard to reach for the shelves. And uh, how do they explain the distal, I mean, lower extremity proximal muscle weakness? They say it's so difficult to get up from the chair. You say it's so difficult to reach for the items in the cells. So those are the clinical signs, folks. So always look for those words. They clinch the diagnosis. When you see in the question, I have problem to brush my hair, they are asking you to recognize polymyositis or dermatomyositis. And you remember even in first year medical school, they teach us to grade the muscle muscular strength in terms of zero to five. And that is exactly what you do in this disease. You need to grade the muscular strength of the patient using that scale, zero to five. And it's not easy uh, because uh, the, it's not that sensitive. That's why we ask patients to do, like to get up from the chair, like uh, in 10 minutes time, and we see how many times the patient could do it. Now, the, the disease onset, polymyositis has an insidious onset over like three to six months. Polymyositis has an insidious onset, three to six months with no identifiable precipitating event. And uh, it affects the pelvic and shoulder girdle. So the pelvic and shoulder girdle are the musculature most commonly affected in this disease. It also affects the neck, causing the flexor muscle weakness. And ocular and facial muscles are never involved in polymyositis. That's an important point. Ocular and facial muscles are never involved in polymyositis. So remember that, folks, if the patient has ocular muscle weakness, so you can say it's not polymyositis, but it can cause cricopharyngeal obstruction because of the weakness of cricopharyngeal muscles that results in dysphagia. Uh, patient has difficulty uh, swallowing things, dysphonia. The patient will have difficulty speaking things out. So those are the important uh, neurological signs we see in this disease. But of course, this disease also affects the lungs, causing. Uh, 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 some inflammatory changes in the lungs and this is called velcro-like crackles. That's an important clinical sign. Velcro-like crackles are heard in this disease when there is interstitial pneumonitis happens in the problem. And uh, heart also. 
like when most of the times it's a, a symptomatic problem, but sometimes it can cause cardiomyopathy, congestive heart failure, supraventricular arrhythmias also. So you see how different, I mean, polymyositis is not just about muscles. It is affecting different organs in the human body. And uh, polymyositis, it has an insidious onset, whereas dermatomyositis has a very quick onset, often within a few weeks. So those are the most important things you need, you need to remember in terms of uh, clinical features. Now I want to talk about six pathognomonic signs, six pathognomonic features seen in polymyositis and dermatomyositis. Number one, gotten papules. Number two, gotten sign. Number three, heliotrope rash. Number four, V sign. Number five, shawl sign. Number six, mechanics hands. So those are the six. So gotten papules, gotten sign, heliotrope rash, shawl sign, V sign, mechanics hands. So those are the six pathognomonic features seen in polymyositis. So what are uh, gotten papules? Gotten papules are basically symmetric, lacy, ink or violaceous raised lesions typically found on the dorsal or lateral aspect like for example here like metacarpophalangeal joints or pharyngeal joints. So if they, are, they are like raised lesions. You see them, uh, th th those lesions are called gotten papules. When it is a rash, when it's like a macular erythema affecting this area, and they, that is called Gautron um, sign. And then the heliotrope rash, like when it is like eyelids or discoloration and there is this uh, edema of the eyes, then you call heliotrope rash. Then the V sign, basically this macular erythema happens around the neck. So we call like, it's like V, V sign. And then there is a shawl sign. You remember the shawls they put on the back. So in the back, the rash comes like this. So the same macular erythematous rash and it's called a shawl sign. So V sign, shawl sign, and then there is a mechanics hands because they, their hands are darkened and uh, some of the times you see these horizontal lines across the lateral and palmar fingers. Uh, so this is that's a very mechanical hands is uh, characteristically same. Now, if you confuse between, um, in contrast to lopus erythematosus, the erythematous rash of dermatomyositis is intensely pleuritic. Many times we come across the confusion between lopus erythematosus and uh, dermatomyositis uh, because the rash is seen in both, but in dermatomyositis the rash is intensely pleuritic. That's not the case in systemic lopus erythematosus. That's an important point in a differential diagnosis. Sometimes even vasculitis can happen in this disease, resulting in very, very serious things like gastric ulcers and gastric hemorrhage and all that stuff. So you see, main points I have told you today, proximal muscle weakness, I have described the cardinal clinical features. I have described the six pathognomonic features seen in this disease. So those are the important things you need to remember in polymyositis, dermatomyositis when it comes to signs and symptoms. The next video I will uh, describe about diagnosis and treatment. Please make sure to follow us. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.